Okay, welcome back to Inside Flicks. We're going to be doing our weekly box office report. Rich, tell us what movies came in at the top five this past weekend. For the last week in January, Avatar The Way of Water is number one again for the seventh week in a row, earning $15.9 million. Coming in number two is Puss in Boots with $10.4 million. Number three is the new Indian action film, Pathan, with $6.8 million. Number four is A Man Called Otto with $6.6 million. And number five is Megan with six point two million. All right, let's talk about James Cameron. Uh, you know, at this point, uh, Avatar: The Way of the Water has surpassed uh, all expectations. <laughs> yes, and it's, I think it's now number four in the all-time box office yes. list. Uh, Cameron's kind of like what we were saying last week. He's like kind of the last director who could deliver this type of blockbuster. Uh, what is it about his movies? And you know, like when you look at his filmography. He doesn't have a long list of films under his belt, no, and, no, but no, all no. of them, all of them have made uh, a, a tremendous amount of money and also have been these huge cultural phenomenons. Uh, does he have the secret sauce? I think he's always had the secret sauce because he, on every picture he works on, he's in full control of it. He, he, he writes all, most of it. I mean, he writes, he was at one time so close to uh, doing Spider-Man, which would have been out of his realm I, 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 back in the, you know, before Sam Raimi, uh, Leo was also going to be, uh, um, you know, Peter Parker. Uh, that might've been <laughs> his bomb or whatever. <laughs> we, we don't know, but yeah, um, he creates it from the start. So he, it's like, um, r- um, writing novels for him. He takes mm-hmm. all the time. I think that's it. Right. I mean, he takes his time to really kind of come up with these movies. Yeah, I just think he's kind of um, like one of the grandfathers of uh, kind of genre and um, blockbuster filmmaking, and nobody kind of quite gets him gets it quite like him because everyone's kind of also trying to, in many ways, kind of just copied him. So you know, he's the he's the leader of this, and uh, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> With the success of Avatar: The Way of the Water, do do you think we're finally finally gonna get a 4K release of uh, Abyss or True Lies this year? Oh. Uh, I know. Well, I know. Uh, Abyss was already in the works, but True Lies. I think that was also rumored. Uh, but the Abyss is is definitely getting updated too. Yeah, uh, that's been not rumored. But I think it's already been confirmed. Abyss, but True Lies. He's always been um, saying that he's going to be uh, re, uh, retouching that one and uh, eventually re- releasing it on Blu-ray. I don't know because everything Richard just said. Like, they've been saying that for years about just the regular standard Blu-ray releases, and yeah. um, it's still nothing. Uh, materialize from that but i do think that um the theatrical uh releases and having new remasters and all that it's like you know that's a good indication that they are coming but i still wouldn't hold my breath for this year i'm i'm hoping for the uh, abyss because i think that is his underappreciated masterpiece and I think when that movie came out, it was kind of got mixed reviews and I don't think it did that well in the box office, certainly compared to his other films. And so I think now looking back at his filmography, I think maybe that might be his best film. And certainly it's his first film that we kind of got a, an idea that he is so obsessed with the underwater uh, world that, you know, that he brought into these Avatar films. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, the abyss is something I've been waiting for to really revisit and rediscover again. Yeah, um, but also um, as far as James Cameron goes, I mean, he, um, the guy is full on uh, the, the master of filmmaking. Well, let's talk about the big surprise of this weekend, this past weekend, which is the Indian film Pathan. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, kind of uh, came out of nowhere. We didn't even realize this was coming out this week. Yeah, just another one of those uh, um, Indian action films that come out of nowhere and do, does very successful. And from what I hear, it's done, uh, it's doing tremendous overseas, of course. Um, but this is just one of those ones that'll, you know, most likely be in the states for maybe two, you're lucky three weeks, and then you know, it'll go its way. Yeah, but this is also the latest film that uh, features Shanrug Khan, who is the kind of legendary Indian actor. He's known as like the Tom Cruise of Indian actors. Oh, okay. And so, you know, I, I, I haven't heard this movie before. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. ing- I'm ignorant when it comes to Indian films. Sure. Uh, although I love RRR, which came out last year, is one of my favorite, mm-hmm. which was one of my favorite films that came out last year. And I think RRR really kind of opened our eyes to a, this, this part of world cinema 
we're going to see a lot of Indian films this year that's going to break through this box office, at least the top 10 or so. I think India is doing something different with the action genre. They're, do, they're kind of rewriting the cinematic language or grammar of action films. You know, if I'm an American studio executive or if, you know, if I'm James Gunn, maybe they should look to some of these directors or even some of these major stars to like, to, to uh, hop onto their comic book properties. From what I understand, the director of RRR um, is uh, um, attached to a U.S. Uh, uh, release coming up soon. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that does. I mean, because he's the most popular of them all right now. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, so we'll see how he translates because, uh, you know, uh, the, the, it's, it's happened before with John Woo and stuff like that. I yeah, mean, I think it's very uh, comparable to, to, the, to the Hong Kong action films thing. in the 90s. Yeah where a lot of those kind of filmmakers from Hong Kong and China tried their hand in, uh, at Hollywood and some succeeded, some didn't. But I mean, I think we might see a, a similar theme here. Yeah. So, you know, another kind of thing that we learned from this, these numbers is that Avatar only dropped about well, 21%, but Puss in Boots, which came in at number second, only dropped about 11%. Very impressive. Very impressive, especially for being the only kids film again. I mean, I mean, it only came out one week after Avatar and look how strong it's been. I mean, it, it's, it's it's not going away. It's got nine lives. <laughs> yeah, I I, th- I think I think it's really impressive how all these uh, movies have been holding uh, in the box office. But I think uh, really uh, the main reason these movies have been holding so strong is because uh, the new releases. I mean, I guess but with the exception of uh, Pat Path On, or uh, but all these like kind of new releases kind of did really poor. I mean, I mean, all of them really didn't crack the top five, and. Um, I think that's why, you know, all these movies were able to still have a very strong holds. And kind of like Richard was saying, I mean, Puss in Boots is literally the only children's movie in theater. So I think that's going to be, be sticking around for a while. And uh, I wouldn't, I, again, like I, I said this last week, but I wouldn't be surprised that uh, eventually at a certain point that um, Avatar is uh, behind Puss in Boots. Because I think they're going to be neck and neck very soon. Let's get into the rest of the top 10. Rich? Coming in number six is Missing. Number seven is Plain. Number eight is the new uh, faith-based film, Left Behind, A Rise of the Antichrist. Number nine is Infinity Pool. And number 10 is The Wandering Earth, number two. Yeah, I mean, like, kind of like I was just saying, like these uh, new releases are, uh, did pretty poorly. And um, I guess it shouldn't be like that much of a surprise. I mean, we have this kind of faith-based film that, like, you know, yeah, it's, it's just very bizarre. <laughs> and, um, and then Infinity Pool, which actually looks really cool. I mean, did poorly and kind of bombed, but it, it did also kind of like pretty much what I was expecting. I think, you know, this was able to kind of bring in the, the Mia Goth audience from last year with X and Pearl. And, you know, it's not a big audience, but <laughs> but they're loyal. Well, let's look at the, the new releases. Let's look at what's coming out this this weekend. Rich, what's coming out in wide release? The only two movies open up wide are Knock at the Cabin and 80 for Brady. Well, I mean, not get the cabin, which is the new M Night Shyamalan suspense thriller, mystery thriller, with Dave uh, Batista kind of leading the ensemble cast. It has a really good shot of, of taking number one uh, and dethroning uh, Avatar. Right. What's What's your guys' thoughts of M Night's new movie? Is it going to be number one? Well, he I himself, so. M Night, said that uh, this is his best film, so I'm I'm really hoping that it is uh, <laughs> because um, I really want him to be a um, you know, uh, he needs to come back more than his actors, whatever, uh, you know, any actors that he's worked with. Well, he's kind of, he's kind of already here. I mean, I think he's for the last couple of films, he has kind of slowly, but surely have gone back into the spotlight. You know, last week we've talked about, uh, directors with big personalities or, you know, maybe even big egos. Uh, this is certainly the case with M night, you know, a couple like 15 years ago, he, he here's a guy who maybe bought into his own hype and he kind of, kind of ruined his career. I don't know, ruined his career, but like he had a little bit of a stank on his career. Yeah. I remember there was a point like when I, when I would go to the movie theaters and M Knight's name would pop up, like produced by M Knight or directed by M Knight, And there would, you know, a, a portion of the theater would just laugh. Right. Right. Just, he, just from seeing his name. Right. I think, I think maybe he got famous too quick or maybe he got labeled something t- too much. Uh, but I, I, I think certainly after like last airbender and after earth, really hurt his career what was that like 15 years ago but i think slowly but surely he has climbed back up doing these kind of smaller pictures with smaller budgets and is able to really kind of become a new uh master of suspense yeah he took a break and then he he did the found footage movie that was well received and then you know he came back with split which people loved right. and he was doing he's been doing really well 
um, uh, you know, split and glass open to about 40 million each. Hmm. And um, his last movie, um, uh, Old, was, you know, a, a disappointment uh, critically and a disappointment at the box office. But that one opened to about 16 million. I think this a knock at the cabin is going to open higher than that, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's going to get you know to that forty million that Glass and Split got to. So um, I'm, I'm guessing um, uh, mid to high twenties. Tw- uh, yeah, I would say so. I would say the same thing, and I think that that's good enough for a number one slot for next for this coming week. Also, I think it's you know, got to remember this is an R rated thriller, so uh, you know it's not going to be like Megan, which was a PG thirteen film, so it had you know had more of a general audience of, of flair uh so i i don't i don't see it doing as big as something like megan you know this is this comes at the right time for m night he has come back even though he got bad reviews or mixed reviews for old i think it didn't smear his name that much and i think nowadays if you go on tiktok or you go on youtube uh six cents is coming back it is making this a, a reemergence, and there's a lot of videos of people showing their that that movie to their kids and their kids not knowing the twist ending of that movie. So there's like a whole string of videos of, of reactions to, to six cents ending. What's Oh God, what's going on? I don't know. I can't hear them. Not only that, uh, Signs is also a huge hit for him, too. I mean, that's the one that everyone comes back to Yeah, eventually. Well, uh, unlike you guys, I- I'm saying the knock of the cabinet. I think it'll do even better than you guys are saying. I think it's going to be 30 plus because this is this is not a football weekend. This is, they got the you know, Super Bowl off uh, for this week. And so um, there's no big competition. <laughs> 80 for Brady. <laughs> that's the big uh, the, that, that's the big number uh, that I'm worried about. Uh, I'm an old fart, but I'm not, I'm not looking for that. <laughs> I look forward to that. So you, we're all agreed that knock at the cabin is going to probably most likely be number one this week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, 80 for Brady's, I think it's going to be number two. Mm. And I think number, number three is going to be a, a very close race between avatar and puss in boots, but I think it's still going to be avatar. Then puss in boots, uh, close at four. Yeah. I think 80, 80 for Brady will be lucky to reach the top, the top five. Really, you think it's gonna be that bad of, of a bomb? Yes, I, I don't think so. I think I think uh, people like these type of comedy. All right, let's talk about what's coming out on VOD and streaming. What movies can we stream this week? Available now on VOD Premium is a uh, Babylon. On Netflix, you'll be able to find Pamela Love Story documentary. Streaming this weekend will be Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Also on Peacock, Sam and Cake, and spoiler alert. On Shutter, you'll find Skinamarink, and that should be it. <laughs> uh, Skinamarink, it's this is the new Buzzy horror film that came out in theaters a couple weeks ago. You guys talked about it uh, really quick, mm-hmm. uh, so it's going to be available on Shutter. Uh, well, it's definitely an experimental film. Uh, this is the feature film debut of Kyle Edward Ball, and he kind of started this project on YouTube, and, and you could go on his YouTube page, which is. Uh, called bite-sized nightmares and you could get a flavor of what this movie is it, 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 to me it's interesting because it's like kind of trying to do something totally different with the horror genre uh and do it in a way where it is more about atmosphere than actual kind of camera tricks or maybe even typical narrative storytelling uh i felt i'm very interested in, in checking this movie out yeah I might, I might check it out that's about it for this uh report uh, we'll be back next week We'll see how well Knock at the Cabin does and see if M. Night comes back with a, with a big hit. All right. Bye-bye.